Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing absolutely awesome today. It's Wednesday. It's preview day and we're previewing it off the back of a win against Geelong with us rolling on a river to GWS this weekend. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It does help the channel out. It does mean absolutely everything to me. And Thank you, firstly, for 2,600 subs. That is absolutely incredible. I never thought we would be in that position. So if you have subscribed, liked, commented throughout that journey, you are all legends in my book. And we are going to get straight into it. So, I mean, if last week was, which I think it was, was a very poignant moment in the football club in the terms of, winning tight ones with comfortability. I think this one poses a new little question that I think many people have asked about our football club and many people have literally talked about for a long, long time. And that is, can Carlton go into this game as favourites and really put on a show? This is the, the one, really. These are the games that, you know, when people talk about danger games and stuff like that, I don't really buy into it, to be honest, but I, I do when it's this type of game because I understand Carlton have had a habit in the last couple of years of going into a game where you look at it on paper and go, this is a winnable game, this should be a win, which I think it is against GWS now. And that's probably been the question marks. There's been a lot of times that Carlton have had a horrible win a horrible defeat and then won against the odds. There's also been a few times where they've had a good win and then backed it up with a poor performance. And this is really the next step, I think, now in, in this group. And if they can do it back to back, and what I'm talking about is I'm not talking about a 100, 200, 300 point win. I don't buy into that nonsense. And OK, percentage came into a factor last year, but I'll back my point. Percentage is irrelevant. You should be winning games. If you're trying to get in on percentage, you're cooked. As a football club, you're cooked. Absolutely cooked. So percentage, loser's mentality. And the facts are 2021, Carlton should have, 2022, Carlton should have been well in. Well in. So let's have a look at how we do that. And I think that the way the boys do that is how they played last week. And if you watch how West Coast played and they dismantled GWS, it was attack hard, particularly from half back. It was up in the pressure in the forward half. And it was really making sure that they didn't give GWS any, any, any moments of relaxation. And that is so important for Cal. That is so important for Cal. And that going into this game, we should hold our heads up high because the pressure indicators sure that that is where we're strong. Particularly, you know, in that forward half intercepts, do you know what I mean? That was a huge thing for me. That was a huge thing that we've seen under Vossi, which is so important. 40 to 28 possessions at stoppages. That is so important. That's the strength of their game. But 40%, 40 points intercept possessions, 63 to 20 in forward half intercepts. Carlton have really made this a staple this year and no one's really talking about it. Everyone's talking about the midfield last year and that's a big thing. They've really added this layer. With them three smalls, that's going to be super important. And that's what Carlton have got to do. They've got to go out there as a champion side. They've got to go out there now with that mentality of not are we, we are. And that is going in from the eight ball, being really positive. And that is the big things where we have the takeouts from round one. They were very positive at times. They were very negative in their in their possession use. And towards the end of last year, again, it wasn't very brave. It wasn't very confident. And that is incredibly important, I feel, in these games. The good teams go out and smash shit sides by going out and being positive, being proactive. And the game plan that Voss has implemented is incredibly proactive. So let's Get in to the concerns. Audi Crips. Tom Green. Now, this guy here is incredible at what he does. For a young age, he's a bull. He's tough. Big staple of Kingsley's game plan so far has been that structure around there, and it hasn't quite worked. But this guy is key to it. And this guy here, 
genuinely, when you look at how teams line up against GWS, they're looking at Coggy. Now he's back on the ball. They're looking at Ward and them type of players. And then when Toby Green floats through there, etc., they're looking at it. This is a big thing here um, for Cowan because this is what he does incredibly well. Uh, he gets the ball and he feeds it out to Callahan, to Weir and players like that, trying to get that injection going. Stephen Canelio benefits quite a lot of Tom Green's hard work. And this is a perfect matchup here for Ed Kerner, who played that role against um, Cam Guthrie last week. I'm trying to stop that source. Now, people look at him and say, oh, versus Cam Guthrie, he tagged him. He didn't really. If you actually look to what he did, he did a real run with role. He made sure that he was getting possessions as well and impacted in giving Cam Guthrie something to work on defensively. And that's what you want Tom Green to be doing. You don't want him to be like when Cripper has his great moments, when he gets off the leash and he has no defensive responsibilities. But this is going to be a really good battle. And I do hope that at times Carlton just put Cripper straight onto him and move Ed to play that kind of stifle role, which he did very well. Like a lot of his great work this weekend was intercepting the handball out to Guthrie and being very proactive. And that's kind of the modern day tag. So I'd love to see Cripper get this guy first bounce and then you can rotate it because then you want to free Cripper up. But this is where he can hurt you. He's a workaround stoppages. It's where Carlton are strong. He can stifle it. And that's something that West Coast did incredibly well, which is very unlike them. They stifled that problem by basically just making him do the hard yakka and having no one to pass to. Toby Green is always a problem, but we've got the perfect fix for him. But Toby Green's ability to work high up the ground, to be that conduit, to be that magic man, to be that go-between, that, th that guy that you need in a crux, shouldn't be understated. This guy is a game-changer. He's done it to count before. Who can remember that one-step, 59-metre top or whatever it was, as the siren went at half-time a couple of years ago? This guy is incredibly strong. Um, incredibly intelligent, incredibly intuitive the way he plays football. And this is going to be someone that Carlton traditionally would fear. And I think that what you found with Carlton is they've tried to negate their transition defence fragility by playing higher up the ground and putting the pressure very early at the source of where most of these teams play, which is good against this mob because that's where Toby Green feasts. Toby Green has that ability to get out on a mismatch one-on-one -on -one, and it's game over. He's particularly done that with us. And he's going to be a guy that Carlton, I wouldn't say have to pay a lot of attention to. The main problem there is how he's been fed. They've got to look at the source. And the other guy we're going to look at for them, I call him the liquid shawl sort. We haven't quite seen him float down the back yet, but I'd imagine Kingsley in an ideal world would want to be able to shift this guy when he needs. And he's becoming kind of like a bit of an issue, I think, Himmelberg, because he's incredibly good at taking the marks. It's the fact he doesn't have anyone to work off him. And I don't think Jesse Hogan's that man. But this guy here can definitely cause trouble because he doesn't mind getting up the ground and taking that kick further forward. When you play a heavy zonal system like Carlton do, anyone that likes to skirt around that 50-meter, 60-meter mark can cause havoc. And that has probably been well, um, Youngies. Issues at times when players do that, he does have a habit of over-following and not allowing the zone to pick him up, even though it may be a mismatch, because you know he's going to be bombing that one on the goal square where you want Young. He's definitely going to be someone there, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this guy float back a little bit this game. I think this might be the game that you see him maybe so occasionally go down to that centre-half back to try and negate the forward threat that Cowton pose. But he's going to be definitely that licorice all sort type player that plays just about everywhere who has the ability to that I'm going to be keeping an eye on and seeing how it is. We talked about the forward pressure. It's incredibly important. And the Mosquito Flate couldn't fit always into the graphic, but he should be there because he deserves it because he was the leading pressure player on the ground for the Blues. These two are going to have a real big job, especially Durden. He's going to be working them arcs very hard putting on the pressure and trying to build up that transition. And that's how Carlton have fabricated the transition last game. Their ability to run in clusters and run numbers and Motlop and Durden's work rate shouldn't be undersold because it allows a key forward to stay forward. It allows the wings to pinch in 
and also become a threat on the transition. And these are very important. And these are the guys that we're going to be really looking at in this game to, to, to defend first and foremost, but also be able to get down the other end in and out the scoreboard. We know Durden can do the amazing work. Always was incredibly, incredibly hungry this week with his ability to pick the ball off the deck and be kind of fortuitous in his positioning. But that fortune comes down from good thinking and using the old mentality that is needed. And these guys are real pressure players. I think the three players here, Owies, Motlop and Durden, really give an intent and an understated role in the metronome of pressure, but also in ball movement of well, Watch Durden's possessions last week. He's looking to make that happen. He's not scared to take that kick on in the corridor. He's not scared to play that give and go. And that's going to be very important because pace and quick structure changes can really hurt GWS. Up the other end is the Towers of Doom. And this is going to be a really interesting one for GWS because I don't think GWS can handle it. Sam Taylor's brilliant. Haynes, Buckley, they're okay. Haynes probably more of a transitional threat. But this is where Cowton can really cluster them and really cause problems, particularly if Jesus is working high up half forward and being that con conduit for the boys. This can really stretch them out. And that is where Cowton are going to be looking to do it. We know we like to target these. We know Kerno's very incredibly good at ruining structure by coming up outside that 60 arc and peeling back. You saw him and Ed Kerno combine, just showing you how structure falls down very quickly when he roams there. And Harry's due goals. He's been in and around the last couple of games and it smells like a Harry Kerno game, doesn't it? He will be very hungry. He was very strong last week. He won us the game with them marks. But this ability for the both of these guys to help the wingers out and now having strong running wingers to overlap them really helps us on the counter-attack. And these are going to be two guys that are going to be really tough. They're going to be really tough for GWS. And I expect we'll have big games. We've talked about wingers. We know this is a winger pro-friendly show. Ollie Holland and Mr. Blake Akers, they're so incredibly important defensively, but also on the attack. And defensively, this is going to be really interesting because you look at the two sides that have had success against GWS, um, albeit GWS won the first one. It was a very good game, though, has to be said. And there was some fragility you could see about them. In the second game, the Eagles maximised the width here. They maximised how to hurt GWS. And it was quick ball movement. And that's what Adelaide did as well. And it's interesting that, do you know what I mean, that the wingers are so important. And Aker's ability to come in and be the outlet defensively and Blake and Ollie Hollands' willingness to do that really takes away that. And if Cowan can funnel the play through the corridor, which is what you suspect that GWS like to do, that plays into Cowan's zone pretty well. Because if you look at how Voss is doing it, he's trying to funnel players in. And you've seen a lot of them kicks come from the centre almost deep because of how he set it up. So these guys here are going to be incredibly important at spreading GWS, getting into them zones, getting them options, getting them outlet balls, but also dictating the play. And we saw Akers and Hollands look for that corridor ball, look to switch it. And a switch does hurt GWS. Very much so. As shown by the Eagles, Eagles are probably the masters at kicking it around and creating them zonal flaws, particularly in the midfield. And that's what they attacked. And that is where these two go. And I suspect Ollie Hollands and Blake Akers will have, one of them will have a ridiculous game. I'm talking 25 touches, 10 inside 50s. And we finish off with player focus on Adam Saad. Now, if you've watched the two games, which I'm sure you have um, in your little scouting notes, Adelaide and Mr. West Coast Eagles had great success off high halfback flank versus them and the spread. Jermaine Jones was sensational this weekend against um, GWS. And Adelaide, when they played, they, they had great success on that overlap run and looking for that run. And it was looking really, when you watched how they played and why they set up, it was to try and get that, get them pegged back. Get them pegged back. Now, GWS won that first game by their just dominance. Dominance around clearance, 37 points they hemorrhaged plus to GWS. And you saw that 
they didn't quite have the zip. They did float players through there. When Rory Laird went on there, they incidentally got on top that game. That was where it worked. Now, for Carlton, they went and gave Toby Green way too much respect, I felt. Now, last week, Jermaine Jones helped because he was a problem and Toby Green was resigned to a bit of defensive duty at times or they shifted him to the midfield, which is a huge win for Carlton. That's where they won him. They can't hurt us as much there with their forward structure. Adam Saar did a splendid job this weekend on one of the more tricky players, Tyson Stengel, and his ability to run and give him a defensive problem is how you negate Toby Green. And this guy here can do what Jermaine Jones does times two. And that's been fair to Jermaine Jones, probably 10 times. Adam Saad is going to be looking to attack that. And that is a weak area because what they do is they heavily pressure the fall of the ball, but then they protect their midfield. So there is a small gap. West Coast killed this using their ball movement. That's where they like to pot it around and then look for that runner. Saad just attacks that space. And if he attacks that space the way that Carlton move in a, in a grove almost, that they move in clusters, that could very quickly overlap their midfield. And that is where Carlton will be focusing a lot of their attack from. I suspect you see this guy be given quite a license to roam this week. And I expect a very big game from our big friend, Adam Saad. And let's go on to my team selection then. I am going to bore you. I have gone in unchanged. I have gone in McGovern, Wheater, and Newman. My halfback line being Saad, Young, Doc. Wings, Akers, and Hollands with Cripper there as the centreman. Half forward, I've started Fisher. He had a good game last week, and he will be integral trying to be that conduit. We talked about conduits hurt them. Harry Mackay, Jay Sauce. We've got Mr. Durden, Kerno, and Mr. Motlop. The followers being Pitonet, Kennedy, and Ed. And on the interchange bench, we've gone Owies, Chera, Cowan, and TDK. The return of two rooks and the return of three smalls. It's music to my ears. The one change I have had is I've brought Josh Honey in on the sub bench. Two wasted weeks for Lockie O'Brien. He's played 20 minutes. He played half in the VFL. Give him a full VFL time now. He's not quite in the best 22 as of yet. You're not going to drop Akers and Hollands. So send him there. Let him have a full game, have a bit of a rest so he doesn't have to travel and whatnot and uh, focus on what you've got. And he can focus on his craft. Josh Honey did well in the preseason, did okay, did well at the VFL. So he's got the game time under his belt. See, and maybe give us a little option on that high half forward, the role he incidentally played in the full VFL. My prediction one, like I said, very important game this because Carlton are now going in as favourites. So I am predicting a very controlled performance by Cowan, and I am going to go with a five-goal win for the Blues. Very controlled. It could be more, but I am looking for control of the score. I'm not bothered about if it's one point or 20. I want to see these boys start to finish, control the game, have them at arm's length, and run the game out as a team. So if that is a 100-goal win, who cares? At the end of the day, I want them to control it because I think this is the next step in their mentality. And that is winning games when your favourites in comfortable, cruisy manner. So that is the preview then. I will be live for this one on the Blue Abroad. Let me know in your comments. We've got a lot of questions that have popped up on your screen to answer. Check them out in the comments. Again, thank you, thank you. 3,600 subscribe. I think I said 2,600 at the start. Pom's mass was horrible. But thank you so much for that. The road to 4,000 is nearly here. We're trying to hit 10 by the end. So give that a like, a sub, become a member of the channel if you want. Till next time, look after yourselves and pommy out.